Today, I'm just north of Brisbane, meeting a woman who built an edible garden so comprehensive that it enabled her to avoid food shopping for a whole year. Sonia and her partner Rob decided they wanted to turn their two-acre property into a food garden about 15 years ago and gradually built it bit by bit. We didn't actually do much planning. It just evolved as we went along. We just took notice of where we walked and thought, well, that's where we'll put a path, so we'll put garden beds either side of that. And, you know, just the things that you, you pick often. Of course, you're going to plant those closer to the house. You know, you don't want your eggs too far away because you're sending the kids to get the eggs. And as you go along, you just notice things and set things out according to what you notice along the way. In 2019, Sonia set out on a remarkable challenge to eat 100% of her diet from her garden. So tell me about that decision. Well, I just wanted to see if I could do it. So it was just me. I didn't get the kids to do it. But yeah, I, I did the whole year. And it was, yeah, it was really good. It was a little bit challenging at times. Like when people were eating bread around me, I would really miss bread. And also a couple of times when I went to bed a little bit hungry because I'd only had like cabbage or tomatoes. That was all that I could get, you know, <laughs> that night for dinner. But other than that, it was really, really amazing. The connection I felt to the garden, it was just really worth doing and I'd love to do it again someday, especially now that I've got honey. So I'd try, we'll try it again one day. Growing enough produce to live off for a year is a huge achievement, and the fruit trees here on the property would have helped immensely. This truly is a forest of food with a staggering number of temperate, subtropical and tropical fruit trees. There are far too many to name, but for just a taste, there's wampi, lemonade, banana, citrus, peaches, jaboticaba and tamarillo. The forest's understory is edible too, with smaller cover-forming crops like pepino and nasturtium. The food forest is complete with vines laden with fruit. That's unusual. Is it a passion fruit? Yes, it is a passion fruit. It's a rarer type of passion fruit. It's called the Japanese hard shell. So they're called hard shell passion fruits for a reason. And that's why you need a hammer to crack them open. So, I'll give it a go. Oh! Oh, well done. <laughs> Do you want some? Oh, yes, please. Thank you. So, it's a little bit creamier than your average passion fruit. And it is sweet and very creamy. It's lovely. Yeah, they're really yum. grow a large number of native plants in your garden. Why is it? What is it about them that you like? Well, we like to grow them because they're adapted to the local conditions and soils, of course. But also, there's so many different medicinal uses with all these native plants that Indigenous people have been using for tens of thousands of years. And um, I just find that really fascinating, you know, sort of uncovering that again and finding out what all, all the uses are. A lot of them are quite tasty, like this one here. It's a native mulberry. It'll have fruit in a few more weeks. So it tastes fairly similar to the exotic mulberry, but you need to get a whole handful of them to get the taste. Sonia is growing so much produce in her garden that she's able to provide for her community as well. Yeah, we have a garden gate store where we sell excess passion fruit, excess pumpkin, some plants at times, and we've got a bit of a following in the neighbourhood. They really enjoy stopping by when they're going on their walks and buying something. You operate an honesty system with your farm gate. Yes. How does that work? Is it successful? Well, yes, it is actually. We were very surprised how successful the honesty system has been. In fact, sometimes we feel like people have put in extra money. <laughs> because they must be just so appreciative. So that's our holiday money, actually. Yeah, that money all goes into our holiday fund. And then we go on holidays, we're carrying around all these coins, so it's... <laughs> well, to get such prolific growth in your garden, you've either struck lucky with brilliant soil or you've done some hard work. 
Well, actually, this is hard clay soil here. So it was actually terrible like 10, 15 years ago. But in that time, we've brought in about 150 trailer loads of pre-mulch from the dump. So that's really helped improve the soil. And of course, we compost. Come on. Well, I've never seen a compost bin with so much character. Yeah, I know. She's great, isn't she? My husband made me this for my birthday a couple of years ago, and we call her Gloria, the compost pig. And she's a compost tumbler. When, the, um, when she's full, she spills her guts, and there's the beautiful compost. Got you. Growing and gardening on this scale takes a huge amount of time and commitment. It's surely a labour of love. At first, we just loved the idea of growing as many fruit trees as possible and eating our own food. But then as we went along, we realised what great benefit it is doing that for the environment. Less plastic waste, less travel miles for your food, less pesticides used, less carbon emissions, all those sort of things. When you grow your own food, you're really helping the planet. So that's why we've continued. Sonia's approach follows an old adage which is often applied to gardening. Start with what you've got and improve it step by step. And the results are truly encouraging. <laughs> 